that's that's your uh you know that's your deep dive theological answer is what he just gave you let me bring it up so so that's down in the deep end of the ocean is where todd took us right away let's go to the wading pool let's try to make this as, as simple as we can where would i defer your generation tell me where where, where where would i tell them hey here's where you can observe this in the wild here here's here's where to go to see how this is supposed to work where would I send them? So you're trying to find, uh, asking for an affirmative. Yeah. Af an affirmative. What state would I my, send them to? My, like, yeah. like, like, like oh, more than half of the states in this country, government is their biggest industry. Yep. Okay. That's it. So what state would I send them to? What industries would I tell them, um, you know, to, to gaze upon? Where would I, where would I, where would I look for? Like I can, I can show, I ha I can give evidentiary, evidentiary, citations that children are better off with a husband with a mom and a dad right there's still places we can go to show examples of some of the the themes that we that, that that we are historically attempting to conserve as conservatives where would i send them where would i send your generation go here to observe how this works yeah well there are basically no observ not no example. What's I would, not I would say I would say though, I mean if you want a, not an affirmative example, but it's that campus reform video. Hey, you like socialism so much, why don't you share your GPA? Okay, okay. and that, that, that's not that's not I don't think that's what you're saying though. Well, no, it's not what I'm saying, but it's what I was going to say next. We're in a position this this is the same conversation I just had with Daniel Horowitz. Same conversation. The Israelis had to be dragged kicking and screaming into reality by a body count. And they just couldn't, they tried to ignore it for a long time. The original, the original gangster, the OG, the man who helped launch the, who helped, who helped oversee the terrorist bombing of the Munich Olympics, the OG, Yasser Arafat. They walked him, welcomed him into the palace hall. They legitimized him. They broke bread with him at the White House in the 90s. They're going to make him a head of state. They made Abbas a head of state. The enlightened crowd in Israel spent decades making all these same mistakes. And then eventually the people said, we're tired of our kids coming home from the Tel Aviv mall in a damn box. Make it stop. Make it stop. Make it end. Don't want to watch this anymore. We're not tired of our kids coming home from, from Kabul in a box yet. That'll preach. It's because it's in Kabul. Yeah. So it, it, they faced existential peril daily, the Israeli people did. And it took them decades to get to the point where they were willing to acknowledge reality on this level. We, there's, there's, there, so that's why it's revival. We say revival or what? Bust. So you invoked the pilgrims. They came here seeking revival. They went bust, bro. They went bust. Half of them dead. They went bust. They said, let's try something new. You know, Winthrop and the guys are sitting around doing a Bible study. They see this part where parable of the talents comes in and Jesus says, whoever has a lot will be given even more. And whoever has a little and is a poor steward of that will have even that taken away from them. So they did a 180, and they had revival. They went bust. They were going to go bust. You asked for an affirmative observation mm -hmm. um, or an example of where this is working. This is kind of tongue-in-cheek, uh, but Bernie Sanders' success as an author. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, actually. <laughs> And Bernie himself is saying, hey, if you have a best-selling book, you can be a millionaire, too. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, we, we talked on this show, on this very show, about the degree to which people who would claim to be the very defenders of capitalism, mm -hmm. they defend corporate welfare in yeah. a way they yes. never uh, for yeah. personal yeah. welfare. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is why, guys, which is why the conversation, again, that Tucker Carlson tried to kick off that's why that that is integral to this. Yeah. Yes. Except the basis, the basis, and, and he did a great job. And I'm not knocking that at all. But 
again, this is related to the basis of what Todd just said a few minutes ago, we're never going to have a coherent understanding of what Ta Tucker Carlson is talking about when he talks about, um, you know, uh, morality uh, or the absolute or amorality with capitalism and the results of that, we're never going to have a, 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 an affirmative foundation for understanding that until, again, it's revival and understanding the basis for our entire uh, economy, which is, as Todd po pointed out eloquently, uh, the family and everything's related everything's connected no that's really that's really true i we, we get our uh, testes busted all the time being iowans because of ethanol right mm -hmm. and all my limited government buddies including my my best limited government buddy who's on the show each, each week who was just on last hour we get our nuts cracked over this all the time all right one yep. giant big subsidy the oil industry is more uh, the oil the petrol industry is far more heavily subsidized so, okay, you make, you, you make the argument. You tell an Iowa farmer who government is already telling him how much corn he can grow and how much he can sell it for, whom he can sell it to, yeah. how much land he can own and what he can do with that land and how much it has to be insured. You go tell that guy that he can't process corn into biofuels while we're going to subsidize Exxon Mobil's green energies program. You make that argument. And then say to yourself, why do they think we're the party of the rich? I don't understand this. I don't know where they get this, like, these ideas from. I don't know. Where do you think they got these ideas from? Where did, where did Aaron's generation get these ideas from? You know, when, when, when they brought in the participation story trophy stuff, this stuff was coming in as, as our generation was leaving the high schools. It was starting to come in. Those four or five, I mean, you would know this better than anybody being around youth soccer for decades, literally growing up yourself, and now your daughters are in it. Mm -hmm. Do, do those, those five-year-old kids get around and vote? Who made the decisions to get rid of the, the standings and stop keeping score? The kids or the adults? The adults. The adults. And then at the end of the game, all the kids come to you and ask what question? What was the score? What was the score? <laughs> it's not their fault. It's not. If you feel like the next gener like Aaron's generation is totally lost, what, well, they, you know, they, they weren't taught the history of socialism and communism, and so they don't know. What's worse, having not been, because that's true, they weren't. What's worse, having not been taught these things and reverting to the wrong side of history that you were never taught? Or, you know what? What the hell? Let's go for the kill. This one's for the few remaining uh, bunch of you that aren't offended yet. What's worse? Being the generation that was not taught history and falling for history's canards like socialism. Or being the generation whose parents defeated these fallacies over there and then stood by and did nothing while they were imported and injected into the bloodstream over here and then subsidized it the whole damn time. What's worse? Todd, your thoughts? You're reminding me of conversations I've had with my uh, four daughters at a certain coming of age. I have no doubt you've had the same ones. And they're starting to look at adult, the adult world and adult problems like, but they, they're in that transition period, and they think becoming an adult becomes you, you, you got your act together. You, you, have, you make the trains run on time. <laughs> really, I know. It's fun, I know, but, I know. And, and it's that moment where you're teaching them, and it's what I said before, you know, those thorns in the side. Even the pilgrims had that, you know, this is why your mom and your dad teach you about Jesus and why it's so important for you to follow him. Because you know those sins, those the, those ones that you do uh, when you weren't nice to your sister, when you lied or something like, yeah, daddy. If you let those go on inside of you and become an adult, that's where the monsters are created. And we have created generation upon generation that not they don't believe in those monsters anymore. Um... Uh, and so we get what we deserve. Yes, we do. The baby boom generation watched their generation, their parents go overseas and defeat all these ideas when they were taken to their, their ultimate conclusion. Not other bad ideas, literally yes, these yeah, ideas. Literally these same ideas, these same arguments. 
and then stood by and allowed them all to be injected and imposed in all of our cultural institutions. And yet we want to mock, we, where, did they, where did the idea that I don't have to move out and get a job, um, where did the idea come from that that was acceptable? Where? Where did this idea that everyone has to go to college, rack up a bunch of student loan debt to learn not a damn thing? Were you thinking about student loan debt when you were three, four, five years old, Aaron? Were you thinking about that? Not really, no. Were you thinking about an art design degree or women's studies? Were you thinking about that at six? No, I wanted to be a spy. Yeah, when you when you started playing sports, were you thinking, you know what, did you and your buddies get together and when you played youth football and thought, let's not keep score and never find out who wins? Did you guys oh, do that on your own? Heck no. Where did all these ideas come from?